Although it's not very common, there have been times where I've lost my internet connection. This got me thinking as to whether my router would continue to work without the internet and whether my devices would still be able to communicate with each other. Let's answer this question and also take a look at whether you can access content via your router and even set up a home network without the internet. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from homenetworkgeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's jump straight in and find out if a router will work without the internet. So a router will still work without an internet connection and provide you with both a wired and a wireless network. It's just that the devices connected to the network won't be able to access the internet. But being that they're all connected to the same network, all of the devices will still be able to communicate with each other. So you don't have to worry about losing access to services like file sharing or shared printers when you are unfortunate enough to lose your internet connection. You can access content from a device that's connected to your router even without an internet connection. Even without an internet connection, all of the devices on a network will be able to communicate with each other, and that includes any storage devices that are connected to the router itself. When a device joins the network, it will be assigned an IP address which marks its place on the internal network. Providing a network storage device like a NAS does receive an IP address, you should still be able to access the content stored on it. A storage device like a USB hard drive that's connected directly to the USB port on the router won't receive an IP address, but as it's connected directly to the router, you should still be able to access it. So if you do have a storage device connected to your router, what you might find you need to do is log into the router and make sure that device is shared. But if the router already has a USB port, you'll likely find it's already turned on by default. When it comes to accessing content and you don't have access to the internet, the only difference is that you won't be able to access that sits outside of your internal network. So it is possible to access your router settings without an internet connection, you just need a direct connection to the router. Although you can connect to the router wirelessly, I find it easier and more reliable to connect using an ethernet cable, especially if you need to change any wireless settings. Changing the wireless settings whilst you are connected wirelessly can lead to you losing your connection and being unable to reconnect. So you really are better off just using ethernet in the first place. The first step is to take an ethernet cable and plug one end into the numbered LAN ports that you'll find on the back of the router. It doesn't matter which one you choose, just make sure you don't plug it into the single WAN port. Take the other end of the cable and plug it into the ethernet port of the device you're gonna be using, be it a PC or a laptop. Next, you need to find the IP address of the router itself. To find the IP address on Windows, click on the start button, Type the letters CMD into the search bar and click on the command prompt to launch it. With the command prompt open, type in the ipconfig command and press the enter key. The default gateway that's listed is the IP address of your router, so make a note of it as we'll need it in just a second. Open your web browser and enter the IP address into the web address bar and press the enter key. This should take you to the router's login prompt. So now you need to enter the username and password for your router. Now if you aren't sure what these are, check the back of the router as most manufacturers include a card which contains both the username and password, and you can also check the documentation that came with it. Once you've entered the username and password, click on the login button and you'll be taken to your router settings. Setting up a home network for both wired and wireless devices, even when you don't have access to the internet, is a fairly straightforward process. So let's tackle the wired devices first. Take one end of an ethernet cable and plug it into one of the numbered LAN ports found on the back of the router. Then take the other end and connect it into your device. Log into the router and look for network settings. You're looking for the menu that allows you to change the DHCP settings. Next is to set the range of the IP addresses that your router will dish out to any devices that connect in the future. Now of course the router itself has an IP address, so this needs to be excluded from the DHCP range. And you'll already know what this is as you've used it to log into the router. Configure the DHCP range to start one address above the router itself so assuming your router has an IP address of 192.168.0.1, start the DHCP range at 192.168.0.2. Then set the end of the range to be 192.168.0.254. So you may notice an option for DNS at this screen. You can safely ignore this as we don't have access to the internet so just leave it as the default setting. Now that the DHCP range has been set and you're connected directly to the router, you can test the connection. Head back into the command prompt and run the ipconfig command again. You should find that the IP address of the device itself falls within the DHCP range that you just set. Now the wireless feature of the router is likely to already be enabled, but it doesn't hurt to log back into the router at this stage as there are a few other settings you wanna check. So head to the wireless menu and make sure it's enabled. On this screen, you should also see an option to change the SSID, the wireless password, and the security protocol used. Now, it is good practice to change both the SSID and password for your wireless network, 
So I'd recommend doing it at this stage. Also make sure that the appropriate security protocol is enabled. If you see the option to use WPA2, make sure that's selected. Save your changes and log out the router as it's now time to test a wireless device. Take a device that has a wireless card built into it, like a laptop or your smartphone, and begin searching for wireless networks. You should see your SSID available and it's as simple as entering the password you just set to connect to it. Now if you're on a wireless Windows device, repeat the IP config command in the command prompt and make sure the IP address assigned, again, falls within the DHCP range. If you're using anything else to test, you'll need to head to the network settings where you should find an option to see the IP address that's been assigned. You might just need to hunt around for a bit, that's all, as where it's located will vary from one device to the next. The final test is to check the connectivity between the two devices that are now connected to your network. Let's assume that the wired device has an IP address of 192.168.0.2. On the device that's now connected to your wireless network, open up the command prompt and use the ping command to try and contact 192.168.0.2. If you get a response, this confirms that both devices are connected to the same network and can communicate with each other even without the internet. So a router will work without the internet in the sense that it can create both wired and wireless networks for your devices to connect to and communicate with each other on. Your devices will be able to access anything that's contained within the network itself, like a USB hard drive connected to the back of the router, but will unfortunately be out of luck when trying to access anything external, like on the internet. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys and you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you drop it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell to turn on notifications. If you haven't already, be sure to pay a visit to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles that cover everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.